In this video, we're going to be looking at government income and expenditure. We're also going to be looking at different categories of taxation, namely direct and indirect taxation, and progressive and regressive taxation. So let's start off with government revenue. Government revenue is the money received by a government from both taxes and non-tax sources, examples of these non-tax sources being returns on public sector investments, public infrastructure projects, etc., to enable it to undertake government expenditures. So in other words, government revenue is the money a government receives which allows it to spend money on different public goods, such as the NHS, etc. So this is a prediction of government revenue for 2020. We can see from the pie chart that the main sources of government revenue are income tax, national insurance contributions, uh, corporation tax, and, and VAT. VAT is another, another big contributor to government revenue. So we've seen how government revenue refers to tax and non-tax sources. So let's look at different categories of taxation. So I've already mentioned that we can split taxes into two groups, direct and indirect. Direct taxation refers to taxes that are paid directly by individuals or firms to the government. Uh, and these taxes are usually levied on incomes or profits. So examples of these are income tax and corporation tax. By contrast, indirect taxation refers to taxes that are paid indirectly by individuals through intermediaries, such as retail firms. So unlike direct taxes, indirect taxes are not paid by the people who owe them. They are paid by intermediaries, like I say, retail firms, small businesses that collect the taxes from individuals at the point of sale. We can see this with VAT. When you pay 20% VAT on goods and services, you don't pay that VAT directly to the government, but you pay that VAT to the business, and then it's the business's responsibility for paying that to the government. So clearly, VAT is an indirect tax. And as we've discussed, these taxes are usually levied on expenditure on goods and services. Taxes can also be distinguished depending on the different effects these taxes have on households at different locations across the income distribution. So when I talk about across the income distribution, I mean uh, comparing low income households to high income households. To start off with, progressive taxes are taxes where low income households pay a smaller percentage of their income in this tax compared to high income households. All else being equal, progressive taxes reduce income inequality. And this is because those who have a higher ability to pay, namely high income households, do give away a larger percentage of their income in tax. And an example of this progressive and an example of a progressive tax is income tax. Regressive taxes, on the other hand, are taxes where low income households pay a higher percentage of their income in this tax compared to high income households. To explain this, I have to introduce a, a new concept, which is the marginal propensity to consume shortened to MPC. So we know that when people earn income, that can go into one of two places. It can either go into consumption or spending, or it can go into saving. So they're the one of the two things you can do with income. Low income households have what we call a larger marginal propensity to consume. And this means that basically they spend a higher percentage of their income on consumption and they put a lower percentage of their income away into savings. And this makes sense because some lower income households may not have the ability to um, put money away into savings accounts. They may have to spend a larger percentage of their incomes to sustain a sufficient quality of life. However, high income households do have the ability to put more away into savings because they don't have to spend a high percentage of their income in order to sustain a high standard of living. Now here's where the problem lies. If, as we said, VAT is a tax on consumption and low income households spend a high percentage of their income on consumption compared to high income households, then low income households spend a larger percentage of their income in VAT. And so you can say that low income households are being uh, disproportionately impacted by VAT. And this is what makes VAT a regressive tax. We can see that all else being equal, regressive taxes exacerbate income inequality. 
Now you may be looking at this and uh, and think that why can't we get rid of regressive taxes and uh, just use progressive taxes? In an ideal world, that would be the way to go. But there are some reasons why we keep VAT. For example, VAT is quite a simple way of um, collecting tax on consumption. By having a flat rate of tax charged on goods and services, no matter who the individual is and no matter what their incomes are, you reduce the need for complex data gathering and identity checking to determine what rate of tax that individual should pay on the goods and services that he or she is buying. Therefore, VAT is kept um, partly because of simplicity. However, there are studies which are looking into the implementation of a progressive consumption tax, and I suggest that you have a look at this. Let's now look at government expenditure. Government expenditure is spending by the public sector, in other words, the state, on goods and services such as education, healthcare, and defence. Government expenditure can be split into two types current spending and capital spending. Current spending refers to as the name goes, spending on things that are required now. So paying police officers to patrol the streets now, uh, paying teachers to teach children uh, at the present time. Capital spending, on the other hand, refers to uh, mainly infrastructure projects that will improve the productive potential of the economy in the future. So examples of these are HS2 or Crossrail. We can see from the pie chart again that the main forms of government expenditure are social protection, in other words welfare payments, health, so funding the NHS and primary care, and education. Like with government revenue, these trends do tend to be long term, so it might be worth remembering the main forms of government expenditure. Thank you very much for listening.